pro-innovation bias is our strong tendency to favor the new and promote them without fully acknowledging their potential downsides. The allure of progress often blinds us to the potential perils that are associated with innovation. Pro-innovation bias is frequently observed in education. Educational stakeholders, from administrators to teachers, often rush to embrace the latest trends and techniques, whether be it personalized learning, project-based learning, one-to-one -one digital learning initiatives, social emotional learning, trauma-informed teaching, culturally responsive pedagogy, mindfulness, growth mindset, or artificial intelligence in the classroom. Keeping up with the trends in education is like drinking water from a gushing fire hose. But we must not overlook potential negative effects. In medical research, both intended benefits and potential side effects of new treatments are investigated. However, educational research mostly focuses on reporting the benefits or effectiveness of new practices, overlooking the unintended negative consequences. The pursuit of what works or best practices often blinds us to the fact that what works or best practices may also cause harm. What if, like drugs in medical science, we start asking educational interventions in terms of both their benefits and the potential side effects? In the state of Texas, an educational program known as the Giant Texas Smoke Screen was launched as a pioneering curricular innovation aimed at discouraging smoking. Despite its widespread adoption across schools in Texas, empirical evidence showed its inability to achieve its intended outcomes. Leaders often complain about the resistance they face when trying to introduce innovations. While some of the pushback may come from an inherent tendency among some people to resist change, it's also possible that the resistance arises from a relentless influx of innovative practices and programs. The ongoing parade of initiatives, which repeatedly fail to deliver on their promises, can significantly demotivate people to implement new challenges. Newly appointed leaders often have an innate urge to implement new initiatives in their organizations. It's partly because they have past experiences of managing similar projects, and partly because they desire to avoid blame for any shortcomings associated with their predecessors. Scholars, like other decision makers, are not immune to innovation bias. For example, a study on state participation in interstate compacts in the United States showed that researchers, under the sway of pro-innovation bias, tended to overestimate the significance of geographic proximity and the potential for learning within those agreements. The overestimation of those factors could lead to overly optimistic evaluation of the impact and the success of innovative practices within the interstate compacts. In other words, because of the pro-innovation bias, scholars may believe that being geographically closer or having opportunities to learn from other states would lead to more positive outcomes than they actually do. As a result, the overly optimistic evaluations increased the adoption of innovative policies or practices that may not be as effective as anticipated. Mindfulness programs have been widely promoted as a means of improving educators' mental well-being. Mindfulness means non-judgmental attention to real-time cognition, emotions, perceptions, and sensations, deliberately avoiding fixation on thoughts of past and the future. This state of awareness is typically cultivated through meditation. A study of 224 elementary teachers from 36 urban schools in 2017 showed that 
mindfulness programs help the teachers regulate their emotions and cope with psychological stress. In the United States, the mindful meditation was an industry with a valuation of $2 billion in 2022. The market is inundated with resources on mindfulness, ranging from textbooks and videos to apps, training sessions, and professional development programs. But does the practice of mindfulness come with any unintended side effects? It appears so. Originally developed within Asian cultures as an integral part of Buddhist spiritual teachings, mindfulness was intended to encourage moral behavior. In Asian cultures, the concept of individuality emphasizes the importance of attending to others, fitting, maintaining harmonious interdependence with others, and acknowledging the intrinsic interconnectedness of people. But what are the implications when mindfulness meditation, a practice rooted in collective-minded cultures, is transplanted into American culture, where people prioritize maintaining their autonomy from others, focusing on self-awareness and discovering and expressing their unique attributes. Recent research suggests that mindfulness meditation could potentially lead independent-minded and self-centric people to become less generous and more self-interested. The practice, originally designed to promote empathy and compassion, may, in certain cultural contexts, make people less generous and more selfish. Empathy and trust promote pro-social behavior, such as helping others and cooperation. However, when they're subject to influences of in-group bias, a mental shortcut I introduced in my earlier video, the in-group bias makes us feel deeper empathy and trust towards those we perceive as being part of our own group. However, excessive empathy can make us aggressive and hostile towards those seen as our group members, leading to conflicts and even wars. Too much trust in in-group members can cloud our judgment and encourage unethical behavior. When justifying why to adopt a new program, many leaders say other people have adopted. This is never a compelling reason to follow suit. As we've learned from my earlier video on conformity effect, crowds sometimes yield madness instead of wisdom. Being part of the crowd rarely offers a competitive advantage. When we do what everyone else is doing, we blend in and don't capture much attention or attract opportunities. To stand out, you need to be unique. Being unique can help you carve a niche for yourself, allowing you to showcase your strength and expertise. You get to enjoy the first mover advantage. New programs do not necessarily deliver on their grand promises. Their potential harm may even outweigh the benefits. When a so-called innovative program fails, leaders often attribute the issue to flawed implementation, stating the program was not implemented with integrity and fidelity. This statement has two issues. First, the definition of integrity and fidelity in this context are usually ambiguous and subjective. Different people may interpret them differently, leading to confusion and debates about what they truly mean in the context of a program implementation. Second, the statement assumes that the program would work perfectly in all organizations if implemented with integrity and fidelity, similar to claiming that a particular medication will have identical effects on all human bodies, which is simply not the case. Is it possible that the so-called innovative program does not have the benefits asserted by the advocates in the first place? Investing in the latest digital tools does not necessarily mean innovation. Technology in and of it itself is not inherently beneficial or harmful. It's just a tool like a pencil. Technology is a tool 
not a strategy. Leaders who succumb to pro-innovation bias may also be susceptible to present bias, driven by the allure of immediate satisfaction. The thrill of buying a shiny, cutting-edge gadget is often more enticing than the painstaking process of concentrating on the fundamentals of motivating organizational members to achieve a shared goal, which is the essence of leadership. Novelty can be misleading. Although novelty can pique curiosity and boost excitement, its charm tends to fade rapidly. Recall the fleeting thrill you felt when you first held your smartphone. In organizations, what is often marketed as a new concept or program is frequently just a repackaged version of an old one. To address an organizational problem, no program can solve all problems. Even the most innovative training program will fail to produce Olympians if it does not hire and keep the right people having the right skills, and more importantly, keep them motivated. Recruiting and retaining the right team members and creating an environment to improve their skills may seem tedious, but it's the most effective way to build a strong, sustainable organization. Start observing your decision-making process and those of others around you. See if you can spot instances of pro-innovation bias. Please feel free to share your comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.